Welcome to Wealth Talk. We're here today with a very special guest, Mr. Frank Corbin. I actually known him for years and years and years. He probably didn't know me, but he actually taught me a lot, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about actually getting information out and wanting to share information. And my guest here today is all about that. Frank, thank you for coming and welcome to Wealth Talk. Thank you for having me, sir. Okay, okay. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Frank, with Wealth Talk, um, I know one thing that you really specialize in and, and something that I always go and take in your content on is on generational wealth. Yeah. Right? And, you know, I want to get into that. But first and foremost, I want to go all the way back. Okay. You know, if you can please share with us, you know, where were you born? What was life like growing mm -hmm. up? And, you know, things like that that we get into, into yeah. it. Well, where I'm born, I normally don't disclose that to anyone because that's my new thing for 2020. Uh -huh. Every year I change something new. Okay. So uh, for 2020, I'm black without borders. Okay. I don't nice. represent any country okay, or nice. any flag. I represent okay. myself. All right. Right. So, um, but I grew up between New York City and Toronto. Okay. And um, just got an insight for, for finances and wealth. At what age? Um, Probably about 14 years old, I started thinking about money really seriously. Okay, okay. So yeah. what about before that though? What yeah. about before that? Like, were you, uh, were you like uh, a curious person? Like, were you always interested in stuff? Like, as a child, like, because I know our, our, our characteristics, we, mm -hmm. we have them from young, right. right? So like, before 14 and you started getting to finance, like, what were you involved in? Um, no, just regular stuff like anyone else. I play soccer. Um, okay, nice. I had zero interest in money. Uh, okay. Money became a priority to me. Uh, when it becomes so back to school time, mm. our mom couldn't afford to buy stuff to send us to school. The okay. sneakers I wanted, she couldn't afford to do. Mm. The clothes I wanted, she couldn't afford to buy. Okay. So then money becomes a focus for me at that point in time. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I get you. To finance. That's right. Okay, so what was the, the first thing that even opened your mind up to finance, Dave? Well, um, I wanted money. So there's a supermarket in New York City we call Key Foods. Okay. And so I went to Key Foods and I see the kids there used to be packing the bags. So when you buy your groceries, we would pack the bags and help you take it to your car. Okay. And then the, the consumers would tip us. Okay. And the first weekend I went there, I made $240 US. Wow. I thought I was a millionaire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, for right. okay. That's right. So once I accomplished that, then I get to the understanding money was a direct impact of work. Mm. So if you work, you got paid. Mm. If you weren't willing to work, you end up crying and complaining about money. Yeah. So then I come to this philosophy that, that only lazy people have financial problems. Because mm. if, really if you really want money, just go out and work. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's why I, I went out and worked $240 mm. in one weekend. Mm. And every evening after school and weekends, I would go and work and make myself a ton load of money. That was the last time my mom ever buy any clothing for me to go back to school. Oh, wow. I could do it myself. 14 years okay, old. Okay, so that yeah. first 240, you thought you were rich. What yes. did you do with that money? I saved it. Okay. I saved it. Okay. Yeah. Saved to get my hair cut, saved to buy my, my Jordan sneakers uh -huh. <laughs> and all the, 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 the Levi jeans and whatever was popular that time, yeah. that's what I was buying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then obviously you kept going to work and kept, getting. And kept getting that's more. Right. You keep yeah. more and more. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, where did you go from there? Uh, just continue going to school, finish okay. up school and then um, relocate to Canada and, and then um, when I, once I came to Canada, I realized that same thing. People are always trying to complain about money in the community. They're always trying to complain. I borrow from you. You borrow from me. I borrow from you. And when I don't want to pay you back, I stop talking to you. Oh, so it okay. becomes this whole financial broke problem again. Mm. So once I said, well, we've got to do something about it. And I started getting involved in businesses. Um, get involved in, I first started going to, um, what do you call it? Garage sales. Okay. Is start, that your first venture? First venture. Okay. Start going to garage detail, sale. Start going every Saturday morning. Okay. I get up between... Six and seven o'clock. Uh -huh. uh, actually, no. Friday afternoon, we would scout out where the garage sale is going to be in the local area. Oh, okay. the sign comes up on Fridays. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you know where the garage is going to be. Here's this street, that street, and you scout it out. Yeah. Uh, so Saturday morning, I would know exactly where we're going. Okay. Okay. So we go and, and buy stuff. I normally focus on electronic equipment, mm -hmm. TVs, VCRs, all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. I'd buy them and then go to Canadian Tire and buy a bottle of Amaral and shine it up okay. <laughs> <laughs> and sell it back before the end of the day. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was your adventure. So adventure. Okay. And, then, and then money started coming, it started coming, it started coming. Mm -hmm. um, and now you had your Jordans, you had your main thing. So I'm, right. I'm thinking that now 
that's not what you're thinking to buy. Maybe you, with your mindset, you were looking to buy uh, different things, maybe bigger things now. Or not. Well, not really. I'm just okay. looking for money at this point in okay. time. Okay. <laughs> so you kept saving up. Keep saving, okay. buying, saving, doing business saving. Then once I started going to college, um, a friend introduced me to, to resale cars. Okay. So we used to go up at the auction, mm -hmm. up in Aurora, buy the cars, bring them down, the crash ones, fix them up. Put them back on the market, and this is where the big money start coming. We used to make anywhere between twenty five hundred to seventy five hundred dollars per car. Wow, that's serious. That's when the big money. How old were you at that time? Um, probably nineteen, twenty. Okay. 19, yeah. Okay. Um, so per car, we bring it down back, fix them up, put it in the auto trader, uh -huh. and we sell them. Oh, okay. And it, 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 they go like 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 it, we focus on the Japanese car, Toyota, uh -huh. Honda, Nissan, and they sell like crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's going crazy. Uh -huh. That's that's where the easy money starts. Wow. Okay. And then same thing, saving up. Same thing. I then um, I bought a 14 feet box cube van. Okay. And I started doing moving. I had a company called Thinkers Movers. You think they can move it right across the GTA? Okay. <laughs> More easy money again. Yeah. I would get paid anywhere between. I would say three thousand dollars to about five fifty five hundred dollars to move someone in the GTA or all the way up to like London or or Hamilton. So you were doing the moving yourself? No, I was doing the driving. Okay. I had about ten guys working for me. Okay. And we just continued doing business. Oh wow! Yes. So how did you how did you get your clients? You know because at the oh, same clients is all community referral man. People tell people people tell people. Once you had a truck back then, mm. everybody knew who you are because most people didn't have a truck. Mm. Most people. Uh, to rent a truck from you all was very expensive. Yeah. Right. So we came with a man in the truck. <laughs> so, so what made you think, okay, I want to do moving? I don't think about anything. I just want money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, listen. So there must have been something like an incident that happens where, where you've seen someone make money, then you realize you can make money no, from that No, 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 not right? really. Not really. Here's, here's the thing. I, 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 say, I was very annoyed from broke people around me all the time. Okay. okay? I really know it broke people. I was crying to complain about money, borrowing money for each other, fighting with each other over money. Mm -hmm. So I never want to have that situation for myself. Mm -hmm. So anything that you can show me can make money, I was on board. We're going to make money. Okay. So I so to sit and tell you now, after these years, I actually sit and had a strategy and the thought through process. No such thing. Most of you don't have that process. They get involved, they make money, and they talk about it years after. Okay. Right. So okay. I couldn't tell you now I had a, 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 some strategy how I was going to go about making this money. Uh -huh, uh -huh. No, it just came in front of me. You say, hey, guess what? We're going to the auction next week. So I'll take a ride with you. Yeah. Okay. I see you buying cars, start buying cars. I see you selling cars, start selling cars. <laughs> and that's what we do. <laughs> so you were doing uh, some of these things probably at the same, around the same time? No, too. I actually did. Probably one after oh, the one next, after the other. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, it wasn't all at the same time. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying though, if you're if you're selling cars and you're making thirty five to seven thousand per car, right? Why would you switch from that to moving? Good question. So what happens now? The Ontario cars, Ontario had a lot of more um, in foreign cars than Montreal and Alberta and these places. Okay. Once the boys out there realize that the the Japanese cars making all the money, they start pouring down into Ontario and buying up all these cars in action and increase the value. Okay. So once they start doing that, your profit your margin, margin becomes slim. Yeah, yeah. The same thing when it comes to moving. Mm -hmm. Everybody start buying a truck and uh -huh. they start moving people uh -huh. and they start dropping the price, dropping the price, dropping the price. Uh -huh. And when they start dropping the price, you gotta compete mm -hmm. and you make less money. Yeah. So that 35 to five grand became more like 500 to 1500. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So no yeah, more. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Exactly. I don't like competition. Yeah, okay. Competition means that we're gonna work hard for cheap. Mm. The consumer wins when you start competing. Mm. Yeah. Right. So I like to be in an environment where it's just me or two people alone, yeah. and we just dominate the market. Okay. Once a lot of people start coming in, yeah. the profit margins start shrinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. That's yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from the moving now, what was next? Uh, the moving. I, I finished up college. No, after the move, I, when, I, when I started doing the college, I kind of stopped the moving at that point in time. Okay. And then once I get into college, I start doing um, the, the, the car sales, uh, buying cars from the auction and fix them up and sell okay. them back. Okay, right. okay. So once I, finished, once I finish up college, again, the profit margin started shrinking. I went to work a job like everybody else. Okay. Yeah, I went to work a job. and. Um, so let me ask you though, uh, sorry, real quick, because mm -hmm. um, nowadays, like, I guess there's like um, a conflict between Business and school, right? right? But you were doing both. Yeah, I was right. Doing so both. what what was it that made you go to school at the same time when you're making all this money that some of these people are probably going to school and they graduate don't even be making? That's right. Right. Well, I think 
these things are not businesses. They were hustles. Okay. okay. <laughs> they were side hustles. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're side hustles without clear direction. Mm -hmm. That means we don't know when it's going to end today yeah. or next week or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're just hustling to make money. Yeah. Okay. So we never had, I never had a business plan. Yeah. I never had a, a budget in mind. I have okay. none of that stuff. Okay. I'm just buying a car, fix it, sell it. In like less than six months, I had about 10 cars in the shop, fix wow. it and sell. Okay. Okay. And more important, all that money came from my credit card. Mm. All on credit. Just use a credit card. Mm. Okay? I use the bank's money. Mm. Buy the car, use the, the bank's money, fix it, and then sell it to make the profit. Mm. All on credit card. That's what I did. Because okay. when you have you're a university student, you have a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what but I'm glad that you said that, right? Because in university, and this is what this is how I actually got to meet you. Because yeah. when I first went to college, mm -hmm. There was a bunch of people that were there offering me credit cards. Right. Right. And I took them. Right. Credit cards and I spent them. Right. And it ruined my credit. Mm -hmm. But you, on the other hand, you were using credit wisely. So who gave you that education of how to use credit? Like, and you know, like, cause you didn't, and most people, like my situation is very common. Yes. Right. But mm -hmm. you, you were opposite. So where did you get this insight? My banker at CIBC, beautiful young lady named Sonia. And, and the first day I went to open up a bank account, she says, Frank, um, I'm going to teach you something about credit. And I used to go to CCR once a week. Mm -hmm. I would sit in her office, and she would explain how the credit system worked. Okay. I should explain about credit. In less than six months dealing with her, I had a, um, a gold card from CIBC. Oh, wow. I had a gold card, which I still have today. <laughs> oh, wow. And that was when you are in uh, college or university or something? Just when in college. When, right. you got, when you just got it. Just okay. got so it. So early. College. So you're lucky. Yes. Yeah, you didn't I got have to go through that. That's right. Okay. And what were the key things that she taught you at that time that, you know, had put you in that position? Like, what are the key things you remember that she taught you? The, the main thing is paying your credit card on time. Mm -hmm. And the second one was do not over leverage. Do not go past a certain amount, the credit limit. Okay, when you're building credit, when you're building, um, building wealth, you don't want to exceed the credit card be above 35%. Okay. Which you've probably seen every time in my book later on. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. I read your book. Yeah, exactly. so, yeah. so just, just yes. for clarification, yeah. that's how uh -huh. I met you. I, um, yeah. I seen mm -hmm. your, your, your ad somewhere, right? Yeah. And at that time, I was, I was in financial trouble, man. I, 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 I owed all my credit cards. I'm getting wow. calls every day. Yeah. My mom's like, oh, you have to pay your credit. <laughs> This is this, and then I seen your thing. It stood out to me. And after at that time, I met my now wife. At the time, she's my girl. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, "Hey, let's go see this guy. Let's go see yeah. this presentation and, mm -hmm. and hear this." And at the at, when I went to the seminar, you were like schooling us, and like my, like my mind just blew. Like I was going over my head. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, "Yo, this is some serious stuff." Yeah. Like, I didn't know about it. And I bought your book. And I, as soon as I got home, I just started reading your book. Mm -hmm. And I just started applying the stuff that you were sharing in there. Right. And I just noticed my credit getting better and of better, yeah. you know? So, you know, like, thank yeah. you for that. You know, you're years welcome. later, you yeah, know, yeah. I appreciate that. Of course. Right. But, and, and I guess this is what the lady taught you. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. She taught me a lot of stuff and the other stuff I learned as I go along. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, um, every few months, the bank would call me and offer me more credit. Mm -hmm. And at that time, most people would say no. Okay. I say yes. Okay. I would say, yes, give me more credit, increase my credit limit. And I said, why do they call me off more credit? Yeah. So then I take it on my own to start call the banks every four months and increase my credit limit on all my credit cards and line of credits. Okay. And all of a sudden, within a short time frame, I have over $200,000 worth of unsecured credit from the banks. Wow. Among the three, four banks. Wow. I'm like, wow, I can actually buy cars with this money. Mm -hmm. And I start buying cars, fixing them and selling them. Buying cars, fixing them and selling them. Wow. That's what happens until the profit margin starts shrinking. Oh, that's serious. So yeah, you didn't yeah. have to use any of your money? No, no. We had no money. So anyways. everything you have is <laughs> profit, pretty all, much. All profit. All banks' money, all profit. Nothing to lose other than the bank's money. Yeah. That, that's but serious. I was pretty smart and, and assertive with it, so I wouldn't lose money at all. I was very on top of things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Then after, after that, you know, like from there, you said you, you got into the selling, and then mm -hmm. I guess you graduated from college. Graduated from college. Okay. Um, Start working a job, um, mm -hmm. like most people stop selling cars. I'm busy working my job now and trying to get everything on. Plus, the car margin was shrinking and it was too small, not enough money anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, the company I was with, we used to travel all over the world. Okay. I was doing mineral exploration for a company in Mississauga. Uh, so I'd be two weeks here and two weeks in Russia and two weeks in Africa and oh, wow. two weeks here and six weeks there and three months here in Morocco, everywhere, traveling. And so we're making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So one of my... Co-worker at the time, he's in the industry longer than I was. He says, 
guy named Steve, he says, he said, Frank, uh, you're going to make a lot of money in this business. You're a sharp guy. You're very smart. You got to figure a way to get a tax break. So how do you do that? He says, well, he and his brother, they own a real estate company in, in Kitchener. And he says, um, buy a real estate. And I said, okay, show me how you guys do it. Yeah. He said, uh, when you're free this weekend, you drive to Kitchener. Yeah. Kitchener was the bush back yeah, in those yeah, days. Yeah. So I dropped the Kitchener that weekend. I was very curious, you know. And Steve showed me, he said, Frank, I own this, we own that, we own this, we own student rental, we own all these properties. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm definitely going to start buying real estate. And yeah. so that was one of the guys that first introduced me to real estate. Okay. And then I started buying rental properties from there on. And then here that I am. That was before you were a real, real estate agent, right? Oh, yeah. So I, first you were a real estate investor. I am an investor for probably over 15 years plus before I become an agent. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just became an agent in um, 2006. Oh, okay. I was investing since 1997 or 1996. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So talk to us about your first investment. Like, did those guys bring you along or? Um, no, no, I didn't because they invested in Kitchener. I started doing myself in Toronto, in South Etobicoke. Okay. Right. So I went out. I, again, I saw buying a lot of books and, and courses and stuff as well. Okay. A lot of seminars. Yeah. And you learn from everyone. Yeah. And you start to figure out what you think works best for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I read a book about buying a property, zero money down. Okay. And um, I went and I bought that property in South Africa, Zero Money Down. It was a triplex for $240,000. Oh. And then I got $20,000 back on, on closing. It was two sixty, dollars negotiated with two forty, dollars but $20,000 back up on closing to do the renovation. <laughs> and with 5% down, that was a sweet deal. Holy. So that's a, it's the knowledge. Yes, yes. It's the knowledge that's just not this knowledge. It's just reading up, listening to people, reading up, listening to people. I listen to everyone, mm -hmm. but then you find your sweet spot what works for you. Mm -hmm. Right, but there's a lot of knowledge. I can take two sentences from this guy, three from this guy, this from the other person. Say, okay, that would work here. That wouldn't work here. Mm -hmm. And you put it together in packages. What works for you? Mm -hmm. right, so that, and that's how most success people work. People think. We have strategies and we know exactly what the energy is going to be before we start it. You don't know until you do it. Yeah. If you're new at something, the unknown is, is wide. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but yeah, once yeah. you do it, you have now a strategy of what you're going to do next and what you're not going to do next. Yeah. And that's why it pretty much worked for okay. me and most other people. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then from when you had the first uh, property, right, um, obviously triplex, so you had to get tenants yeah. and all that stuff. Like, so you knew all this from, I guess, reading. All going to the manual. Just following what the people who did before me or, or did and what the experience they had, good and bad, and just follow the process. But did you run into any roadblocks? Not like, really. Remember? Not really. The okay. manuals were clear. Like, okay. there's so many real estate education um, materials out there. If you rent a roadblocks, it's because you're just a lazy investor. Mm. Because the information is out there. Yeah. I didn't just start this stuff. Yeah. There's guys who've been here years before me. Yeah. yeah. Who've done it better than me and who, who've done greater than me. Yeah. You just follow, listen to this stuff, and they all document their, 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 their journey. Yeah. Yeah, just follow. <laughs> yeah, and talk about right. documenting. I remember um, back then, even when I was. I was taking your information mm -hmm. and you, you did a video, right? And I think it was in South Etobicoke, it was near the lake. Yes. And there was a property mm -hmm. that you, I think you had one of your clients invest in. That's right. Right. And I think, I, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a duplex or a triplex. Probably a triplex. Yeah. yeah and, mm -hmm. and then you, had, you, 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 like you were showing them. So talk to me about that too, because not only that you learned if this stuff yourself, mm -hmm. you started teaching people. That's correct. Yeah. So going to that. Well, the thing is, when I started off in this business, I wanted lots of partners. Mm -hmm. Most people had no clue and they were scared. Mm -hmm. So I like, okay, I got to do this myself. Yeah. So, I, so the, the, the trend was very up, it was very a long way up for me, starting mm -hmm. off in investing, because most people didn't know what to do. They were too scared, they were always scared. Yeah. So then I said, let me start teaching people this stuff. Yeah, okay. And I started teaching people and, and it, that went crazy. My seminars and workshop went like, it was ridiculous. Like the yeah. moment that people come out and learn mm -hmm. from my stuff, then we start doing courses and, and it, it went crazy. I had a mentorship program. Okay. So some of the videos you see of me and something a lot of people around me, yeah. I, was, I used to do on, um, on the road tours okay. and taking 15, 20, 30 people on the road and showing them real estate properties right across the GTA. Wow. I showed them from cheap properties done in Jane and Finch and John Garling, mm -hmm. all the way to million, $2 million properties on Mississauga Road in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I ended up doing. And it, that worked great. Okay, right. yes. so you still, I'm sure some of your mentees you're still in communication with right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I still work with a lot of people uh, in the background. I don't showcase as much in the front now because I, I don't need to. My yeah. network is that big now. Yeah. Um, so I do, I still work with a lot of people. People have been working for like the last seven, ten years plus and we still continue working together. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then also you're teaching them about credit 
And like that's how I, I figured out from you. So with them, yeah. you taught them the same thing with zero mm-hmm. money down and all well, that stuff. Most of the guys who I work with now had no money when we started. Okay. They're, they're, they're using money from credit card to, mm-hmm. to get down payment and pre-construction, all kind of stuff they're using. Wow. Now those guys sitting on millions of dollars worth of equity. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Okay, so now it's not as easy though. And that's not true. It is, it's still easy. Oh yeah, they yeah, just the money point. down to get the get the property. Just the price point is different. Well, mm-hmm. here's a simple example: of zero money down. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the properties? Um, a pre-construction selling for for three, four, four hundred thousand dollars. You can get five five percent down. Mm-hmm. You take the money from your credit card, mm-hmm. put a down payment to the builder. You have a year or two to pay off the to pay off the credit card. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, that borrows not, that money's not borrowed money anymore. Yeah. And you go to closing. Yeah. How much money came out your pocket? Zero. Yeah, I know. The that's... difference between uh, 1997 and 2020 is the price point. That prop is selling for 240, now it's selling for 550. Yeah. That's the only difference. Yeah. But okay. to get that access to that money, like, it's, it's not as available as it is. It's not it true. If you have good credit, the banks can give you money. Okay. There's line of credit, there's credit cards, there's so many money out there that's easy okay, and cheap. Okay, so it comes down to credit then. Like, so right, right now, comes back you, to credit. So yeah. you're saying, because I know a lot of people, when it comes to credit, you know, people are so cautious with credit because, mm-hmm. you know, most people, even in the black community, a lot of people mm-hmm. don't have good credit. I know this firsthand <laughs> from like even working with different people and I'm uh-huh. seeing, you know, the, the credit scores and stuff uh-huh. like that, they're really low. So like it, with, the, with the people there, like what is the course that you would, there's just a quick run through, obviously mm-hmm. you can't go through the book, but yeah. like say someone who has poor credit right now, but they want to buy a house. Like what is the, what are the steps would you tell them? Well, if you have poor credit and you have one job, you're a lazy person. Mm, okay. If you have poor credit, you have one job, you're lazy. Okay. End of story. If you, are, if you owe someone's money, you should be doing two, three, and five jobs to make that money back to pay them off. Okay. Which is to give you good credit. Mm-hmm. Right. Good, bad credit is normally a result of lack of payment yeah. or over leverage. Mm-hmm. That's what causes bad credit. Yeah. Okay. Now, situation happened loss of job, loss of spouse, loss of business. Mm-hmm. Get hustling. Mm. Don't sit down and sleep. Don't watch the credit card. Don't watch the bank statement. Go work it. Mm-hmm. I finished college. I had three jobs. Okay. So two jobs on a side hustle. Yeah. Right. In six months' time, my student loan was paid off. Wow. Right. You got to hustle. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you have good credit and you're not hustling, then you're just lazy. Mm-hmm. Then you, 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 you bring your situation into the future. That's you. Yeah. None to do with the banking system or access to money. Okay. Every bank from 1997 to 2020, want to lend the money to AAA borrowers. Yeah. Every bank in the world wants to do that, whether it's the United States or Canada. Yeah. They yeah. want to lend you money. Banks yeah. want you to borrow money and do business. Yeah. That's how they make money, when you borrow money. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's what happens. Okay, but you're talking about go get more jobs, but you know, we have 24 hours in our day, mm-hmm. right? Um, you're gonna, if someone works two jobs, I did that for a period as well, right? right? But you have two jobs, that's 16 hours in your day, yes. that's done. Then yes. you gotta sleep they for gotta eight sleep. hours. Yes. So, you know, like, what time, that's pretty much you're saying, you're just gonna be working. Work, 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 okay. put it in. Yeah. That work is only for a temporary time mm-hmm. frame, bro. Yeah. When you have that capital, and you can say, Frank, here's $100,000, I wanna buy that property, uh-huh. you don't have to work anymore. Yeah. You know, your money's working for you. Yeah. But how do you build that capital if you don't have it? Yeah. You gotta go do gotta, the work. You gotta do the work. Gotta I did the work, most of my friends did the work. Yeah. Now, if, if you were in that situation, they gotta come and do the work today. Yeah. yeah. They gotta just work. Okay, so what about now? Um, mm-hmm. We have this COVID that happened and you know, people are talking about they're losing their jobs and yeah. you know, so for them to go get, get work, is, mm-hmm. is it, is it, it's not as you know, easy as it was before. I'm just, I'm saying know, this to you right now because I'm saying these, these are the, the reasons yeah, yeah. why people will come up with, yes. right? So what do you have to say to that? Online work, this online work, this online hustle. Mm-hmm. There's people selling stuff on online, they're selling stuff on Amazon, they're selling yeah. stuff. It's, the work is different today than when I was doing with yeah. the work. Yeah. Right? I was delivering yeah. lost luggage in my time as a side hustle. Yeah. You don't have to do that anymore. You can do something, um, you can do Uber. Yeah. Uber Eat, you can mm-hmm. do Uber Drive. Mm-hmm. We didn't have that back then. Yeah. It is now. Uh-huh. You understand? Put on your face mask and go driving 2 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's work, it's a hustle. Mm-hmm. Right? You have a car, yeah. go working. Yeah. I get what you, you're you saying. Have, you have the phone, you have the internet. Mm-hmm. Just get hustling. Yeah. That's all it is, hustle. Okay, I get what you're saying. So you're pretty much saying it doesn't matter what it is right now, just go and get something yes. to get you money. Right. To, right. So you can build to get to that next step, right? The question is, why do you need something? Mm. Why do you need more money? Yeah. Why do you need a better situation? Because mm. that's your motivation to get working. Yeah. You see, my motivation was I didn't want to have the next generation have the same crying complaints my generation had. Mm. 
I didn't want to have a broke conversation with my children. Mm. Okay? I didn't want to be in that position. Mm. So I did everything it takes to make sure that conversation has to be different. Mm -hmm. And that's why I kept working, working, working to overcome the, the, the rat race. Yeah. And I tell you, dude, if the people who came and started investing with me from day one, 99.9% yeah. .9 of them are financially free today. Wow. If you stick to the program, mm -hmm. you're financially freed. Yeah. Now they're doing big investments now. Mm -hmm. And with them, I'm sure you had to make them get their why out as well, right? Because you had a strong why. That's so right. you're saying with them, they had to discover what their why is. Like, why mm -hmm. are they willing to do what they're doing, right? But most of the guys that joined my team or my program, their why was the same. They wanted to have generational wealth for the kids. Mm -hmm. They want to be conservative when it comes to money. They want to be aggressive when it comes to investing. Yeah. And that's what we did. Okay. And the results showed for itself. 99.9% okay. .9 of the people who invested me from day one and stuck to the program are millionaires and multimillionaires today. Every single one of them. Wow. Yes. Every, if, you didn't, if you didn't become that person, you fell off. Okay, yeah, they, they, weren't, they yeah. weren't willing to yeah. put in that work. They weren't willing to put the work in. Okay. Yeah, they become lazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of those became lazy too. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it's part of the deal. Yeah, but that's the thing though, like, even, even with lazy, like when people, I guess everyone has their, um, you know, because you, you're, you're a hard worker and you go, you work all day and right. everything like that. So you would consider, you know, pretty much anyone that's not on, on your tier lazy, I would take it, right? Not really. But then there's people who are, they feel they're, they're not lazy because they're up, they're working, they, but maybe after work they're tired or whatever like that, but they feel that they're not lazy because they're getting out to work. No, but lazy is not based on, on action. Mm. Lazy is based on results. Mm. <laughs> you can work 20 hours a day. Yeah. I only work four hours. Yeah. You're lazy. Okay. I <laughs> Compared you. to me. I yeah. work less hours than you, uh -huh. but you work more hours than me, but your results is not as great as mine. You're a lazy person. Okay. And lazy doesn't mean actually doing the work. You're lazy to think. You're lazy to do something different. Mm -hmm. if, if you're doing 10 hours a day and you only get it 2% um, out, mm -hmm. maybe work two hours a day on a different model to get 6% out. Mm -hmm. So it's not just actually grinding, grinding every day. It's a losing your mind as well. Okay. Right. Yeah. I can put you in a factory for yeah. 20 hours a day. You still don't make much money the guy who's buying a property. Yeah. But he's using his mind differently from yours. Mm -hmm. Are you too afraid or you might be lazy to look at something differently? And that's why they call you lazy. It's not because you're working 20 hours a day and, you, and your results is the same. Okay. Yeah, it's so, what you decide to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not lazy, it's not physical thing. It's more no, mental thing. That's yourself. right. The work is not physical. Yeah. The work is, is mental. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. You gotta make the adjustment. Yeah. Right. Like for instance, um, 2017, 2018, the bank maker, all this disclosure, they're gonna change the mortgage rules. Mm -hmm. You don't sit back and wait. No. You change the way you invest. Yeah, 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 so yeah. we change the way we invest, what we did. We go on the outskirts, we buy pre-construction, they give the banks 24 months to make their correction. Mm. Now that 24 months has passed, yeah. guess what? Interest rate is dropping like crazy. Yeah. Right. So guess what? We benefit in from changing our model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't sit back and say, well, I'm not going to buy real estate anymore because it's too hard to get a mortgage. No. We look at things differently. You want to create mortgage rules now? That's fine. I'm going to buy for tomorrow. I'm going to buy for two years in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So I give you time to correct the market, and the market did correct. Yeah. We weren't sitting back and be lazy. Yeah. But that's what's done. Yeah. See, yeah. and then what do you have to say about, like, people who feel that the, the market, they're waiting, you know, and, and they say, okay, there's going to be a crash. Yeah. You know, and the market's going to crash right now. Prices are too high. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to wait. And yeah. then they're going to buy. What do you have to say to those people? Well, They've been waiting since 1995. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2020 now. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. Since, I've been hearing that since 1995. Uh -huh, the market's uh -huh. going to crash, the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash. Yeah. It hasn't happened. We have slowed down in, in different parts of the market, yeah. but continue to go up and up forever. The market would never crash in the GTA like we saw in America in 2008, 2007. Why? The GTA is an immigration port. Mm. There's people who's coming here that want your lifestyle more than you do. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to do two, three jobs mm -hmm. in factories or whatever it takes yeah. to make that money. Yeah. In three months, in six months, in a year, they buy their first or investment property. That's why the market's not gonna crash. Okay. There's more demand than supply here. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna continue to, to, uh, to, 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 to grow. Yeah. That's, all, that's, the, that's the area, the geographical area we're living in. Yeah. Real estate in the GT is like oil in Alberta. You gotta be a part of it. Wow, I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. And, and, and even on that too, you had a quote the other day which really stood out to me as well. Mm -hmm. You said that if 
people are not owning property by 2030, mm -hmm. then they probably not, are not going to be owning property or something like that. I don't know. You, it was right. your quote, so if you exactly. can. Exactly. So what I said, I says, um, in 2030, we can see a, not a mass transition of finances, mm -hmm. okay? And by 2050, real estate is going to reverse back to the upper middle class and the rich people. Okay. Look at the trend. Expand on that. Right. So we can see, we can see more of the mass retirees, the baby boomers, coming by 2030 mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. When those retirement come to that level that we're expecting, these people are going to have to start transferring their wealth to the kids and kids and kids and kids. Mm -hmm. Okay? The ones who did great, the kids can do great. Yeah. The ones who suck, your kids are going to suck. Because mm -hmm. you have no money to give them. Yeah. Okay. Now, because of the, the demand for real estate, especially in the GTA, yeah. and the income, the, the, the real estate value is going up 10 to 12 times versus your, in, your, your income in salary. Yeah. So $100,000 today is minimum wage 20 yeah. years from now. Yeah. yeah. Right. And if you don't have that salary increasing faster for the properties, you wouldn't be able to buy real estate. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see people come out of college, getting signed with eighty to hundred thousand dollars a year, using that now and they can't buy a property. Yeah. yeah. They could only rent. They can't even buy a condo, they only can rent. Yeah. Because everything going up in value. Yeah. So for people who have access to capital and have access to the information, mm -hmm. if you can invest in real estate today, buy as much properties. Mm -hmm. and it's not only for you, you only need one or two for yourself. Yeah. You're buying real estate for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise your kids we're gonna be sitting waiting for you to die to take your property and can't live a life for their own. Yeah. You gotta secure wealth for the next generation in your time. Okay. So that's what I meant with that statement. Okay, no, yes. that's a powerful statement. Yeah. And um, right now I know um, in the GTA there's a lot of people who do own properties, mm -hmm. right? But I know like um, my my background, I'm 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 everywhere too, but yeah. my parents, you know, my parents are from Ghana and mm -hmm. I know in the in that culture one of the main things is they want to pay off their mortgage, right? Right, and you know that's their main thing. Yeah. Pay off their mortgage, right? So paying off their mortgage, but I know in terms of the property, the, there's there's a lot of equity in their property, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But they don't want to use that equity because they want their mortgage paid off. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say for for those people? Like you know, is it, it should they be comp like happy with just the mortgage paid off, or should they use money for homes? And if they do take out the money for homes, like like the, the, they may be concerned that they have to pay more. Like, what do you have to say in, in, in a situation well, like that? Like people are thinking like that. It's, it's good financial discipline, mm -hmm. but it's a very selfish way we talk about wealth building. Mm -hmm. To buy a house, pay it off for yourself when you have kids that can't even afford to rent. Yeah. Okay? So my thing is, it's a very bad idea. Even for yourself, if you buy, let's assume you don't have any kids. Yeah. If you buy two properties, yeah. live in one, rent the other one out. Yeah. The tenant is paying the mortgage down for that one. Yeah. Okay? Now, at retirement come, your property has zero mortgage. You still have income coming from the next property next mm -hmm. door. Yeah. So, even because a lot of people have retirement issues. I mean, the retirement income they get in from the government or from their the job is not enough to cover their life, ex their life expenses. Yeah. You have income coming from your rental property. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be very sad for, for, for people and kids that have parents who have a house paid to zero and the kids are struggling. Yeah. Like, what kind of parent are you? Yeah. Right. But at the same time, on the flip side too, maybe they feel that their children aren't as responsible. Maybe they, they, they're not going to make those payments and then it's going to fall back on them when they've been working their whole life and they, you know, they, now they finally got to a point where they're able to pay off their home and then say the child's not able to help them in terms of paying off their... Well, there's a risk. The risk is mm -hmm. you invest money and lose it you're losing anyways, or sit and watch your kids suffer mm -hmm. by paying the landlord two, three thousand dollars a month in yeah. rent. You choose, there's a risk everywhere. Yeah. I'm gonna risk the investment before yeah. I risk my kids looking like losers, yeah. paying money down for the rest of their life and can't own something. Yeah. Wealth is growing in this country with or without you. Mm -hmm. You choose whether you wanna be a part of it or not. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Rent is going up, wealth yeah. is going up, yeah. real estate value is going up, guarantee. You whether get involved or not, it's been going that direction. Yeah. It's been going on there since the 1960s. Yeah. It's not gonna stop because of COVID. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You, uh, you, do you wanna be a part of it? Do you want a chunk of the wealth? Uh -huh. Okay. Let's explain something to you guys. When you see the government spending billions of dollars expanding road, expanding bridges, expanding subway, mm. what do you think they're doing that for? It's because they expect the population is gonna be growing. Mm -hmm. That's why they're doing that. Yeah. Okay? So as a smart person, you just says, well, if a subway is going here, I'm gonna buy a property here. A oh, train is going yeah. there, I'm gonna buy a property here. Okay. A bridge is going, I'm gonna buy a property here. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure 
increases because the population is going to increase. Mm. With population increase, real estate value have higher demand. Yeah. Right. So you can sit with your conservative says, I'm going to pay my mortgage off to zero, mm -hmm. okay, and watch my kids suffer and tell them, go dig it in the factory, make some money. It's kind of a bit of a silly way. Like, yeah. if I did the work, uh -huh. my kids don't have to do the work either. Yeah. You know, what kind of parent are you? Yeah. Right. You see, the next generation is supposed to be smarter. Mm. But I don't care how smart you are. If you lack your resources, you're still dumb. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. can't move. You can't do anything it's if you don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. The resources right now is capital. Yeah. You have equity house. Put it to the market to work. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is doing it. Why can't we? Yeah, that's what I noticed. <laughs> like even being in real estate, that's what that's what opened my mind up too. Because yeah. in real estate, I'm seeing everyone's. This is what everybody's doing. Yeah. Right. But then you know, like within our cultures and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that they're not doing that. Not right? enough. So I'm trying to get the information out <laughs> there. And sometimes when I go and I share this information with mm -hmm. people, they're like, "Oh yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that." But they don't mm -hmm. take the action and actually that's doing right. it. Yes. Right, and and I know that's definitely hard because I know people, you know, around my age. Right now, I'm 35. Right, mm -hmm. and um, I know people they want to own a home, but right. that down payment they don't have it. They don't have it. Yeah, and it's right. kind of sad because your parents sit on equity in the house, and the kids are, are paying two, three thousand dollars a month in rent. Yeah, and that conversation could change with just one signature. Mm. It's just one signature. It's called refinance with equity takeout. Mm. That's all it is. Yeah. Refinance with equity takeout, that can change the conversation. Yeah. And if your kids are not responsible, teach them responsibility. Mm -hmm. Teach them. Mm. Right. So if you could go a little bit more deep into that, mm -hmm. you know, for someone who's watching or listening, mm -hmm. right, and, and okay, they hear that now, okay, refinance with yes. equity takeout. Can you go in detail with right. what that is? Yeah, absolutely. So if you have equity in house, you want to go to your mortgage broker or the bank, you refinance your property, take enough money to get 20% down payment of the next property you're buying. Okay. More important, the next property you buy should be a multi-unit property. That means you have a multi-income property. You have a rent a tenant upstairs, a tenant in the basement, mm -hmm. right? So and that's a security blanket. Mean that if I put my child upstairs to live, we have income coming from the basement. Okay. If my child defaults, my child lost their job, mm -hmm. I rent out the property, top and bottom, yeah. to somebody, and it carries itself. Okay. I minimize my risk. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, educate yourself, right? You minimize your risk. Yeah. Right. And then you do the second and third, second and third. Mm -hmm. Most property you should be buying, especially if taking equity from your house, you're taking on a risk. Yeah. It should have two income coming from the second and okay. third property. Okay. That's how it's done. You assess the property for positive cash flow, meaning when all expenses are paid, mm -hmm. do you have more in your pocket? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, you buy the property. Okay. Right. That's what you've done. It's very simple. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Right? So with that now, when you have the equity, you have the two properties, someone lives upstairs, someone lives downstairs, mm -hmm. and you're buying that property. When you take the equity out, uh, do you have to be on title? Or, or, or do your kids be on title? Or You choose. Depends okay. on the age of your kids. You can be on title. It can be your name. It can be your kid's name. It could be both. Depends. What do you recommend? Uh, it depends the okay. age of your kids and the responsibility of your kids, okay. how responsible they are. Okay. So it's, it's a personal judgment. Okay. Yeah, you know your child, you know the situation. Yeah. Right. Also, it depends on your kid's financial situation as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's what happens. So. Okay. I get it's, right. it's by case by case basis. Based case by case. Yeah. yeah. It depends on right. how you how comfortable that's you are. Right. So if you're not as comfortable that your kids will pay, then you would put your name on, right? Yes. You okay. Put your, or you, you, can put, you can put your name on. You control the finances. All the mortgage come from your account and everything. Okay. Income from the tenants come to you. Mm, whatever. It is, okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. I get what you're that's saying. The other thing is, if you put it fully in your kid's name, you can put a lien of interest. Okay. A lien of interest. A very high lien of interest on the properties. For instance, you buy the property five hundred thousand. You put the lien of interest on profit of 500,000. So you have a lien of 500,000. That means that child can't refinance, they can't sell the property, they can't do nothing with the property. Again, you're taking on a risk, buying a property, mm -hmm. that's your security. Okay. You put a lien of interest for almost a full mortgage amount. Okay. <laughs> they can't do anything with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. The market gonna. Uh, that's um, something that you will go to the bank for? Or? No, the lawyer takes care of that. Okay. The lien of interest. The lawyer is almost like a second mortgage. Okay. Right, as you put in the title. So they can't do anything with the property. Okay. Again, that's if you don't trust the kids or you think the potential, they, 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 they have a new spouse in life that you don't like, mm -hmm. you put a lien of interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, I and all these things are, varies, depends on the situation. Okay. Yeah, lien of interest, that's what you do. That's, that's, your, that's your trump card. Yeah, okay, yeah. nice. No nice. refinance, no sales. No refinance, no sales. They can't do anything with yeah, the property. Yeah, they can't do anything yeah. unless they have your consent. And you That's right. Off on That's it. right. They only can live and enjoy it. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then if you don't, even if your kids are young, you would say still go and buy a property. If they're not ready to live in, they should still buy more properties. 
Well, I buy kid, I buy props for my kids when they before they even can walk and talk. Okay. Right. That's important. I yeah. buy it for them with the intention they're gonna have it in the future. I don't, you don't buy it when they need it. You buy it when they don't need it. Yeah. Right. So you have 18 years from from year one yeah. for that property to go up in value and the mortgage to be paid down. Mm -hmm. so that's why you that's what you do it. We buy one property per child. Okay. When you're building a portfolio, yeah. one property per child, one for retirement, and one for vacationing. Okay. One yeah. to get your monthly income to retire, yeah. one for the travel to the world, whatever you want to do. Nice. You build a portfolio, that's how we do it. So pretty much what you're saying is, mm -hmm. is real estate, you use, that's your income. I use, right? I use real estate for everything. Okay. Yeah, for everything. Okay. Yeah. So when you go on a vacation, you just look at cash flow and then you get that cash flow. The cash flow. That's vacation. it. You don't spend your own money. You don't need to. When, when your investment portfolio is established already, when, you don't even need money. Everything comes from the property. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. then you keep getting more properties. Keep getting more properties. And then the more going. properties keep paying you. That's it. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good yeah. philosophy. I like that. That's how it start. It's uh, all, in the, all in the books. It's all documented. Uh, uh, okay, of this stuff. There's nothing new I'm, I'm telling people. Yeah. It's just, I'm just doing it. Yeah. And people who are around me just doing it. That's mm -hmm. why I'm just doing the work. Yeah. I mean, our people have been here for years. Yeah. Uh, before our time. Uh -huh. Years. I'm talking about in the 40s and the 60s. Yeah. They should have learned this stuff. Yeah. They should have known this stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were doing it then. Yeah. Uh, it's just new to us. Yeah, exactly. Right. So now's the time to get going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when you, when you have one, because I have an investment property I shared with you earlier. So mm -hmm. I have one. I have the house that I live in, mm -hmm. right? But then um, I want to get another house, like family house for, for my family. Yeah. But then I also want to get more investment properties. Mm -hmm. So now, um, if I go to the banks now, right? Are they like are they going to be free to give me more money, or because I have I already have a few properties, like to get more? Aren't the banks more a little more strict when you when you start wanting to go and invest in more properties? Not really. It's all based on financial calculation. So if you go into the for a second property, you have 10, 15, or sometimes even twenty percent down. The banks will give you a mortgage as long as you have the twenty percent down. Twenty percent down, good income, good credit. The bank the banks calculate everything based on risk. Okay. So the least risk you give the banks, the better your chance of getting approved. Okay. That's all it is. Okay. Just like a credit card. It's yeah. all based on risk. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Risk and reward, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what the bank does. Okay. Yeah. So they, okay, so as long as you have assets and stuff like that, they're gonna be like, okay, you're good to go. I see you're making money here, yes. here, here. So yeah. here, yeah, I'm gonna income, give you capital, credit. You have that, you're solid. The bank's gonna give you money. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And if the bank says not today, try tomorrow. Okay. If the A banks decline, you go to the B banks. Mm -hmm. A lenders and B lenders. Yeah. You don't go to the don't go to the private lenders. Those guys are way too expensive. Yeah. But the A lenders and B, the, even the B lenders not too bad because mm -hmm. we buy multi um, double income properties. Uh -huh. So we get a lot of income from the basement and upstairs. They can carry the extra costs of a higher interest rate mortgage. Yeah. No problem. They can carry it. Okay. Private is be too much, but a B lender is not bad. Okay. It's still gonna work. Yeah. And then when the situation become better, you refinance with the A bank. Okay. That's how it's done. Okay. Yeah. And then what about the maintenance of the property? Because that's another thing as well. Like some people, they don't want to go and like say a toilet's broken or something there and they don't, they don't want to, or they don't know how right. to fix these things. Like what? YouTube videos. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. Or pay a professional. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either pay a professional uh -huh. or, buy, or, or watch YouTube videos. There's not a single thing can go wrong with your property today mm -hmm. that somebody has not experienced on the internet and shoot a video about it. Yeah, that's true. YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned to fix uh, washing machine from YouTube videos. Not fix, but the problems that could cause them. Yeah. Uh, washing machine. Hot water tanks, yeah. YouTube videos, they're all out there. No, no, yo, yo honestly, I, I, that wasn't on my mind, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. Right now, we have access to like all Everything. the information. The information is yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. The work needs to be put in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's putting that work. You gotta put the work in. Okay, yeah. so for the person right now who's working nine to five, right, um, they, they have maybe their one property that, that they're, they're doing. Right, but you know, maybe they're watching this and like, you know what, you know what, what Frank's saying, I, I'm interested. I wanna, I wanna go get another property. Mm -hmm. What would you think? What would you say is the first best investment for them to, to go and look for? It? Depends on the budget, depends on the finances, depends on the income, depends mm -hmm. on all those things. If your income, I'm, I'm going to the smallest. If your income, your budget is very small, buy a property in the the cheapest neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Buy a Jane and Finch. Okay. Buy at South Oshawa. Mm -hmm. Buy in Malvern. Mm -hmm. Buy in areas that is not massively uh, appealing. Mm -hmm. Buy something. Okay. That's all. Um, just buy something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They all go up in value. Yeah. Anywhere in the GTA. Buy in Regent Park. Yeah. You you name it. Buy in um 
Nielsen and whatever they call it, that place there. Yeah. Um, Malton, not Malvern, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Buy an all what you think that was bad, buy in Jean Garland. Mm. Buy. Just yeah. buy real estate. Okay. Okay? Rent it out. You don't have to live there. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't live there. Yeah. Buy it. Rent it out. Get rental income. Mm -hmm. And then when it goes in value, you either sell it or take the equity out yeah. and buy something else where you want where you, where you can afford to buy. Yeah. Right. That's what you do. Yeah. Buy a Dixon Road. Some of those cars are Dixon for hundred and seven thousand dollars. Buy something. Mm. Just buy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. And don't okay. sell. <laughs> okay. I know I like I like that. I like that. It's just just yeah. go out and take that first step. Yes. And yes. just go and buy something and then yes. even even if it's something new to you, get that experience. That's right. And then once you get that experience, then you see, okay, it's not that right. hard, right? Right. And you start picking better properties as you get the experience, you get more capital. Go on the outskirt. Mm -hmm. This property is cheap all on the outskirts. All in Ontario is property cheap, cheap. Go on the outskirts, buy a property, rent them out. Just do something. Yeah. Rather than sitting and watching videos, just buy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because um, I, I, was, I was in Brantford like uh, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I had some clients that were interested in buying uh, property pre construction, mm -hmm. right? And a uh, real estate agent came in, right? And with, his, with his two friends, or whatever. And then they bought three, just right, yes. right after they, they asked yes. what was available. And they say, okay, we want those ones. That's it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So they just, they don't even care yes. where, like about the house, where yeah. it is or anything like that. They just see. Just buy. Just buy it. That's it. That's what you do. Wow. When we, we're going to, uh, we were selling property at the Ingalls, Ontario. Mm -hmm. We get in 2,800 square foot um, detached homes for 489. Wow. In 2016. Mm -hmm. And people were sitting and thinking and sitting and thinking whether they should buy or not. Mm -hmm. And those properties are worth about seven fifty now. The market went up like crazy. You're buying townhouse for $260,000 in Ingersoll. And the market, those going for four fifty five hundred thousand dollars now. Oh. You got to yeah. buy, just buy. So yeah. When you're looking at a place like St. Thomas, uh, south of London, mm -hmm. uh, certain parts of London, there's cheap real estate everywhere. Yeah. Just buy something, pick a spot, pick a location you like, and just buy something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Just get involved. Yeah. Just do something. And you were telling me also uh, earlier before we started that, you know, when you buy more properties, it's close to buy them close around, around like a same area. If you yeah. buy one, you should buy something that was close by or something yeah. like that. Well, it's easy for you. If you buy all your properties in one geographical location, then easy to go and do maintenance and yeah. do lawns and check on your tenants and mm -hmm. collect your rent. It's all easier for you. Yeah. And yeah. You can buy other driving becomes yeah, a pain for you. Yeah, okay. That's all. Okay. Uh, so final area, you're going to have a lot of properties that you like and just buy a bunch one at a time, one at a time. That's all you do. Okay. okay it's, not that, it's not that serious. It's not that um, crazy. It's just get involved. You got to choose where you want real estate to be your well building tool. Mm -hmm. That's what we choose years ago. We only do real estate. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much the stock market is going up, how much is going down. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Bitcoin, I don't care yeah. what marijuana stocks, I don't care <laughs> none of those things. Okay? If a person can't live in it, I'm not interested. Yeah. Uh -huh. You buy real estate. Yeah. That's all we do. Because mm -hmm. it's proven. Right? Real estate. A thousand years of appreciation yeah. beyond me. Uh -huh. right. That's it. Yeah. And then, okay, so with generational wealth, I want to get more deep into this, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, you know, our Create Wealth Network is the, is the company that we have, and we have the map book, you yeah. know, where we want people to, you know, have that mindset and mm -hmm. go out and, and create general, uh, rational wealth. And that's something that, you know, you're always talking about every mm -hmm. time, general, even throughout this whole yes. wealth talk, you talk about, okay, next generation, next generation, yeah. next generation. Why is that so important to you? Well, I read a book years ago, and the book says one thing, and one line in the book I remember, it says, only a fool allows young to repeat his mistakes. Mm. So if you're a parent, and you have, I would say 20, um, yeah, but 20 years on, on, on the earth before you start making kids, mm -hmm. and then you have another 18 years before that child become a grown adult, mm -hmm. you have 18 years to create a better life for that child. Mm -hmm. And if you let that child come and do the same mistakes you're making, mm -hmm. then the book says you're a fool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be a fool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I create wealth for the next generation. Nice. So from yes. that book, that's, yes. that was, that's been your mindset ever that's since. That's it, yes. Okay. Yes. And, and not only for yourself, but you're teaching others how to do it. That's right. And, and, and getting that, that, that mindset out mm -hmm. there that people need to be thinking about that next generation. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, with that, like me, I have young children, yes. right? But for sure, when they grow up, mm -hmm. I can imagine what, what price is going to be. Yes. Is and people say stuff, well, uh, you don't know what your kids are going to want, what your kids are going to like. 
I don't care what they like. I care what I like. Mm. If they don't want it, it's more money for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm investing for you. Yeah. If you don't want it, I'll take it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's more for me. Yeah. I'll never say no to the money. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, happens. Yeah. So, okay, so can, even if they're not interested, it doesn't matter. You're still setting I'm them up. I'm still setting it up. Yeah, okay. right. We cannot control the desire, the mindset of our kids or people around us. Mm-hmm. What we can control is what we do with our time mm-hmm. and our life mm-hmm. and we do with ourselves. Yeah. And once we put that in place, the rest is gonna sort itself out. Okay. But I don't see a single person who will say no to money. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. <laughs> Not even if your enemy would take your money, if you give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take your money. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for that. And mm-hmm. um, if you can, like, you know, uh, while, while we're in well talk, I like to, you know, give as much good content as possible. Mm-hmm. So if there, are there any other, like, learning experiences that you had or any other gems that you could share that, you know, maybe help you get to a next level or anything like that? You know, maybe well, to, okay, go ahead. Well, not even help me. I, I can tell you the biggest thing that, that, that didn't help me. Because what I help, what I help, what you know, what I do now is, is easier now. One of my biggest challenge in um in, in when I was investing in real estate is finding quality realtors. Mm-hmm. Most realtors were trying to sell me something to make a commission. Mm-hmm. They weren't looking out for my financial interest. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that was really really disturbing. Because when I read something in the manual that says do this, do that, do that, and you tell me the marketplace doesn't give you that, and I'm thinking no, it's not. The book said it does. Yeah. Right. Maybe your marketplace don't give it, but let's go if another marketplace get, gets it. Okay. Yeah. So then that was my biggest challenge. Okay. Um, so I had to learn more to deal with the realtors. I had to learn what I know plus what they know. Okay. okay? And so the one thing, if you're going to work with a realtor, is work with a realtor who's knowledgeable about real estate investing. Mm-hmm. Not somebody just want to sell your property to make commission. Yeah. Okay? So they're who's knowledgeable about real estate investing, who have your financial interests at heart. Yeah. Okay? Because a lot of people watch video, might not even call me and do business with me. Mm-hmm. We might do business with another realtor. Yeah. You have to understand this when you're building wealth. Do they understand real estate investing? Mm. Do they have your financial interest in heart? Or this one say the biggest property make the biggest check? Mm-hmm. That's you need to be careful with. Okay, that's so what, I take it that's why you became a realtor. Is that that's one of the reasons why. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Because the, when I start working with my, with my clients mm. or my men, tees at the time, yeah. I says, go find a realtor. Yeah. Tell me one X, Y, Z and be getting a lot of resistance. Mm. Because they didn't understand what the, the, the client is trying to uh, achieve. Yeah. I said, get a realtor buying your, building your portfolio. The realtor says, you can't buy more than two properties. But that's not true. Mm. <laughs> the bank don't count among the properties you own. The bank count the amount of wealth, asset, and liabilities you own. That's what the bank cares about. And if that makes sense, the bank is going to give you a mortgage for a second, and third, or fifth property. Okay. That's what it is. So we had, so I became a realtor so I can show more people how to get it done the right way. And okay. it's working ridiculously well. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's proper. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, so even the realtors, like you said, yeah, it, learn how to invest. Learn you how know, to invest. how to invest and yes. how to build on properties. Not necessarily the best property you're looking for. Yes. How you're saying, you're saying just go get something. Go get something with yeah. that works. Mm-hmm. Right, so you're looking for two units, a minimum and more, but if you can't get two units, get something that is going to carry itself on a monthly basis. Okay, right. so I want to get into something. So mm-hmm. when you go to the bank, right, and let's say let's say someone has a has a home, they have three hundred thousand dollars equity in their home, right. Mm-hmm. right, and then they get like a twenty percent. Let's say okay, five hundred thousand, right? So mm-hmm. let's say a hundred thousand, mm-hmm. right? So a hundred thousand that they're taking from their their um um whatever mortgage the mm-hmm. the equity line, right? So what do they have to pay on that hundred thousand? Or the borrowed that money? They, that they borrowed, yeah. Is yeah, it it's, similar to what a mortgage rate would be or is it different? Well, it depends. If they, go, if they, get a, um, if they do a secure mortgage against a property, it'd be like prime plus what a prime minus whatever the bank is giving now. Okay. And now it's really cheap because you're looking at about 2% variables, like 1.9 something percent. Yeah. So you have 2% on your money, you're actually paying 100 grand. Yeah. But that's what we want positive cash flow for the carry step and pay the debt for the 100,000 you just borrowed. Mm. We want positive cash to pay that so you don't have to go into your pocket to pay that debt. Yeah. Because your personal home mortgage is going to increase. Yeah. Because exactly. you take on more take debt. On, yeah, yeah, the yeah. positive cash for the new property, you have to cover all the cover, above. Uh, cover all right. the so above. So it's all based on the calculation, doing those numbers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Exactly. And that's a difference between, you know, um, knowing what investment that's properties right. and just, uh, just, just buying buy it because property. somebody tells you to exactly. buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And also the debt that you take on is a tax write off. Mm-hmm. The new mortgage debt is a tax write off. So it's more tax write off for you. Mm. The hundred thousand you borrowed, yeah, is towards investing. Mm. It's a tax write off. Okay. You can write off. Can you, can you just the interest? More detail? The hundred thousand dollars you borrow mm-hmm. as a um, from your personal home as a home equity line of credit. Mm-hmm. The interest rate that you pay in that debt mm-hmm. because you borrowed the money to invest, 
it's a tax write-off. Okay. So the hundred thousand dollars a tax write-off. Also, the new mortgage is like four hundred thousand dollars mortgage. The interest that is a tax write-off as well. The maintenance fee, the pro uh, the property taxes. Because it's it's uh, investment property. Is that investment right? okay. property. They all tax write-off. Okay. It's part of your home now. Part of your car. Mm -hmm. Part of everything, your insurance, your cash for your car. You drive from your home, go to the property, collect your check, tax write off. Because mm -hmm. it's like a business. They, they come right? to your program, yeah. they learn yeah. how to invest. Yeah. You, you charge them a monthly fee yeah. or yearly fee, it's a tax write off. Exactly. They all exactly. tax because it's going towards the investment. Yeah. Dedicated yourself to invest more and more real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, travel to, you travel to Florida to, to a real estate center and workshop, tax write off. Mm. Yeah. So now you're a business owner. Because yeah. you buy an investment property. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You see, that's what I'm saying. All these little insights, you know, it's just knowing about them. Yes. You know, and if you don't know about them, then mm -hmm. you're going to be stuck in like that rat race. Because, that's right. right. That's right. So it's just having that information and mm -hmm. it's getting out there. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Anything else that you can share with us before we sign out of Wealth Talk? Because you, you gave us a lot. Yes. I, like, I'm going to watch this back and just with a notepad <laughs> and just, you know what I mean? Just take those notes. But, um, you know, like, with, with generational wealth, I think that's that's one of the key things, you know, that I really want, like, wanted you to really hammer through because there are people that are out there and they're not thinking that yeah. way, you know? And, and I think, like, especially right now, it's so important. You know, people are losing their jobs, so there is insecurity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, according to you, it's, it doesn't matter. You no, still got to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. still make it happen. Yeah. So a final thought to be, don't be selfish. Mm -hmm. Secure the next generation. Yes. And they will secure you in your retirement. Okay, okay. You heard it. <laughs> Frank Corbin. Now, honestly, I thank you for this. And, you know, with Wall Talk, I would love to invite you again sure. in the future, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can, please just plug in what you do. Plug in how to reach you and, yep. and everything like that. Well, I'm a real estate broker uh, from Remake Realty. My direct line is 647-237-3642. You can connect me on WhatsApp or any social media platform. And uh, what I do, I help investors create a portfolio of real estate, buying three, four, five properties and good properties for rental income so you can retire rich, you can retire young, you can get money for your kids' university education, you get money for the kids' wedding, you get money for the kids' first property, you can get all that stuff if you start early. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And he does give really great content. I'm always tuning in. He sends yeah. stuff on WhatsApp. You know, give us more insights all the time. Well, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. And I thank you for, you know, giving yourself. You know, um, yeah. you know that's one of the universal law, law of contribution. And I, and, mm -hmm. and I see you say, you know, about you're on the money, but you're really about contribution. You're really about giving yeah. back. That's yeah. how I know you. And that's, that's what you're yeah. putting across. Of course, you're helping people make money, yes. but, you're, but you could be doing it all to yourself and keeping all that information to yourself but you're so open to sharing it. When I reached out to you to come on here too, right away you said, let's yeah. do it, you know, and, and thank you for that, man, I appreciate well, it. Well, the simple thing goes, goes, the more you give right, is the more you will receive right. Mm. You gotta give right, you just can't give, you gotta give right. Mm -hmm. So the more you give right, the more you will receive right. The more yes. you give, the more you receive. But you gotta give right. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And you receive right. All right, all Simple. right. Thank you very much. No problem, Paul man. Todd, you know, God bless. And, you know, again, another, another time we'll do some more for sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, man. All right, all great right. stuff. God bless, yeah. man. Yeah.